Hey, superstars, it's your best friend, Scott, and I thought I'd do something a little crazy and start talking about the 2024 National in Cleveland. Cleveland, rocks, Cleveland rocks. I know we just got done talking about Chicago 23, and I know it seems way too early, but it's actually not. Um, hotels and Airbnbs are being booked, and I wanted to go over some ideas about where to stay, uh, what to eat, and what else you can do in Cleveland when you're not running around the IX Center in Baseball Card Bliss. Um, I will also repost this video in the winter when the national tickets come become available and in the summer leading up to the actual event. So let's jump right in. If you're not driving in, the obvious answer is flying in the Cleveland Hopkins Airport, which is like right next door to the IX Center, which is great. Um, so most people will opt to do that. But you can also look into the Akron Canton Airport, which is about an hour south. Um, and being a smaller airport, it's super quick and easy to use, and I actually prefer to fly in and out of that one. Uh, plus, it's right by the Pro Football Hall of Fame, so if you're interested in checking that out, that'd be kind of cool. Um, if you're coming from Chicago, you can look into the Megabus, which is like super cheap sometimes, but uh, personally, I'd rather drive, and then you'd have a car, which would be super helpful in and around Northeast Ohio. Speaking of cars... <laughs> Uh, you really should have one or at least know somebody who has one. It's not as convenient in Cleveland as the National in Chicago where you can just walk from the hotels right across the street. Fortunately, there's plenty of parking at the IX Center. And if you have a car, then that really opens up a whole lot of things you can do and explore in Cleveland. I was asked about traffic. Um, I don't think you're gonna run into a whole lot of traffic. Most of the traffic is going into the city in the morning and then uh, leaving the city when people are getting off work. Um, and I imagine that that wouldn't interfere too much with getting to and from the IX Center. Once you get here, you need a place to stay, right? Um, I was telling everybody that they could stay at my house, but Mrs. Reindeer did not like that at all. So I'm sorry. Um, but there are hotels near the airport in the IX Center. Um, I heard that Baseball Collectors uh, Thursday night YouTube hangout will be at the Radisson Hotel Cleveland Airport West. Um, and I know a lot of guys are staying there. The IX Center is like 20 minutes west of downtown Cleveland and there are a lot of fancy pants hotels in downtown, but then parking and then traffic would be more of an issue. So I don't really recommend staying downtown. Um, if you're looking for an Airbnb or a Verbo, um, I would look in Berea first. Um, that try places like North Olmsted, Olmsted Falls, uh, Middlebrook Heights, Fairview Park, or uh, Lakewood if you want to be closer to the city and the lake. Personally, Airbnb would be the route that I would take because really the best part of the whole national experience is hanging out with your friends. Um, and it is kind of hard for me to give solid recommendations on exactly where to stay just because I don't normally stay in hotels in the area. I've been going to various shows at the IX Center all my life. It is just a massive building with over half a million square feet of uh, exhibition space. It was built in 1942 as an aircraft factory. And then in World War II, they built wings for the B-29 Super Fortress there. And then after that, they built tanks there and they started using it as an exhibition hall in 1985. Thanks, Wikipedia. Um, it has also been used as a temporary high school and a storage facility. And I believe right now they use it for indoor soccer games. Um, there was a Ferris wheel inside the building, but that was recently relocated to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Sorry, Ed. And I mentioned that there is a ton of parking, so that will not be an issue at all. And people really seem to like that the show for is really spread out. Um, Big Scott says the best bathrooms in the IX Center are in the basement, but I'm not really sure he wanted me sharing that information. That could be an insider secret. You could be like, ugh, Cleveland? What is there to do in Cleveland? And I get it, it's not a big fancy city like Chicago, and at least Atlantic City has their casinos, but Cleveland's still got plenty to offer when you're not at the show. We even got a casino downtown if you're into that sort of thing. Um, I mentioned before, we got the Pro Football Hall of Fame is about an hour south, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is really fun, and that's right on the lake. The Guardians will be in town on Wednesday and Thursday and the entire week before if you're coming in early. Um, Friday through Sunday, they will be out of town, unfortunately. But if you do make it to a game, be sure to check out the Guardians of Transportation statues that are on one of the bridges near the stadium. If you're into minor league baseball, the Akron Rubber Ducks are a little less than an hour south and they'll be in town all week. I don't have the single A Lake County captain schedule yet, but they're not far from Cleveland either. 
On the east side of Cleveland, you will find League Park, which is one of my absolute favorite places in the world. Uh, it is the field where the Cleveland Spiders, the Indians, and Negro League Buckeyes used to play from 1891 to 1946. Uh, the stadium is long gone, but the field is still there, utilizing its uh, original dimensions, which is really cool. And the old ticket office still stands, and it is a, a really neat little baseball museum. Visitors to Cleveland really like to visit the West Side Market on the West Side, obviously. A uh, really cool historic building with a ton of vendors selling meats, fruits, vegetables, baked goods, and stuff like that. It's a lot of groceries, which I know won't do you a ton of good, but uh, there are still plenty of ready-to-eat foods in the market and plenty of really cool restaurants in the neighborhood as well. And there's Whirly Ball, which isn't native to Cleveland. It's a cross between lacrosse and basketball, and it's played in bumper cars. And I only really mention it because I would love to get a Whirly Ball game together with a bunch of YouTubers. I think that would be a blast. And lastly, Mike O mentioned the Christmas Story House. Parts of the Christmas Story were filmed in Cleveland. Uh, the Terminal Tower was Higby's in the movie. I like Santa. Yeah. And Ralphie's house still stands, and it is a fun museum that's been restored to look like it actually does in the movie. And it's got leg lamps and BB guns. I can't put my arms out! And if you're really into Christmas movies, uh, Castle Noel is about a half hour south of the IX Center, and they've got a huge collection of props from many different Christmas movies, including Cousin Eddie's RV from Christmas Vacation. It's a good looking vehicle, ain't it? Yeah, it's so nice parked in the driveway. I don't know that any of you will actually check that out, but it is a good time. Mrs. Reindeer thinks I'm weird because whenever we travel somewhere new, I'm researching like really great places to eat, but food is awesome, right? Um, so right by the airport, you're gonna find Fat Heads Brewery and Quaker Steak and Lube, and they're both pretty good, but there may be better options if you can uh, travel a little bit. Melt is really fun. It's known for like big, crazy grilled cheese sandwiches. Um, what else? Dave's Cosmic Sub has probably the best uh, meatball sub that I've ever had. Uh, and then there's Whitey's Booze and Burgers. It's one of my favorite places. They've got great hamburgers and great chili. Um, Boss Chicken and Beer is supposed to have really nice wings. And then there's The Rail is another great burger place. There are a lot of really good burger places. And uh, Schnitzel House is supposed to be excellent if you're into German food. So if you go into the city, you're gonna find Cleveland's most famous celebrity chef, Michael Simon's restaurants, including Maybell's Barbecue. Uh, Maybell's is really good. His barbecue sauce is pretty mustardy, if you like mustard. Um, he also has Bar Simon, which I've never been to, but uh, I know there was one at the airport as well. And what else? Not Michael Simon, but Slimans is uh, world famous for their huge corned beef sandwiches. Um, Cleveland in general is well known for um, Hungarian, Polish, and Eastern European food, you know, like sausages, kabasi, pierogies, that sort of thing. If you want the quintessential Cleveland food, I would seek out a Polish boy. So that is a kabasi on a bun topped with fries and coleslaw and barbecue sauce. It's so good. Um, so if you want to find a place specifically for one of those bad boys, um, Little Polish Diner in Parma and Rowley Inn by the Christmas Story House. So those are supposed to be some of the best. So that's all I really have for right now. I hope this helps out a little bit. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions of your own, um, let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them or maybe even make a follow-up video down the road. Um, I am super excited to have the National in my backyard again and I hope to see you in Cleveland.